Very pleased now to be joined by the one, the only, the internationally famous, the debonair. I'm sure he smells fantastic. My very good friend. In fact, one of my very favorite follows on Twitter. I don't know his whole name. I don't know his social security number. Um, I could not trace his fingerprints if I really had to. From Apollo Houston, Apollo Media, from Apollo all over the world, it is Apollo Dez. The first Dez, I think, to ever join us here on the Blog on the Boys podcast network. Dez, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, I've been a big fan of you guys. And uh we're the weird hybrids of cowboy uh houston fans astro fans so it's uh it's it's different i thought about teasing your appearance um on twitter and saying like des is going to join the show but i didn't want to like stoke the flames and then nah, and then set, go, set you up poorly like you know no, what I mean? no, no, no. you can stoke it you can stoke the flames <laughs> um, i stoke it myself so like what what is what is your life like? So for anyone's unaware, Apollo Houston is the goat of Houston coverage in general. I would say, um, but but Houston Astros. That's how I came to find you guys. Um, I I absorb everything that y'all put out. Uh, we're dropping this episode on opening day. Um, Astros obviously have never lost on opening day since moving to the American League. I don't know uh, if that's been aggregated enough times um, at this point. Uh, but so it's a really busy week. You just got back from spring training. You said you have a cold. Um, I imagine that that's probably from your immune system being all sorts of lowered uh, and inhibited from everything that you were partaking in. Yeah, we spent a month in uh, West Palm Beach for spring training. Uh, you know, some drinks were drank and 18 right back, 18 hour right back was a little rough. And so uh, we're fighting it the last two days, but we're ready for opening day tomorrow. But yeah, Apollo Media has just basically been uh, covering all Houston sports. Uh, obviously, the Astros are bread and butter. Uh, as a Cowboy fan, I, I have other guys cover the Texans, uh, the Rockets uh, as well. But uh, the Astros are, 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 are my baby and they've kind of been in the golden age for a while now. And um, it, it just started as a, as a pipe dream, really at a bar talking with my buddies to be like, Hey, look, like no one's really talking about the Astros and they're, they're winning all these games. And, you know, they, the national media comes down and talk about them, but it's only in October. It's usually in a negative light. So why not us? And <clears throat> it's just kind of spiraled into what it is today. And it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it could all end tomorrow and it, it still would have been a blast. I really think that there's such an interesting dichotomy between what I do um, and, and what you guys, like, I guess maybe the world that I live in and the world that you guys live in. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of, um, I guess, like Astros accounts. There's a lot of like Instagram accounts. There's a lot of people who just kind of hang out online. And I think it takes a long time. I think I hate to get all like content creator, but I think it, it takes a long time to realize like Twitter isn't the whole world. Like Instagram isn't the whole world. Like that's just a fraction of the world that is like content on the Internet. Um, and so, you know, I started to take my Astros fandom a little bit more seriously a few years ago. And at that point, like when, when I get a little bit deep into something, it's like, okay, um, I need a Twitter account. I need a podcast. I need a blog. I, like, I need all these, I have a checklist I have to go through. And it really wasn't that, um, honestly, like from an Astros perspective and what is cool, um, I think about baseball as opposed to the NFL is you do get kind of the home broadcast vibe, like the AT&T Sportsnet stuff is awesome, but you are limited to what they're able to produce. And they have a lot of jobs and, and things to do themselves. Um, so that's where you guys kind of came in. And I feel like you do kind of, you you sort of own the market, like, you know, and, and that's a cool thing. Like if it, it feels like your baby and like you help kind of shape and mold the minds and opinions that a lot of people have on the Astros, which is a cool place to be at. Yeah, it was, uh, early, early on, I was like in Brace of the Villain role and um, the, the H Town versus everyone and, you know, during the scandal and all that. But now in the ecosystem it's just also helping other content creators like Houston's so big and diverse and I mean Texas as a whole I mean our, our plan is to expand and cover the state of Texas uh you know Apollo Texas just locked down the state but there's so many great content creators everywhere and the ecosystem's so big and, and why be a big fish in a small pond when you can just grow the ecosystem around you and, and put values into into other people or, or prop other people up and then on the other side and see other content creators doing stuff like oh wow we completely missed that like how do they get there? That's really cool. What can we do to support them? Uh, obviously, that was a blind spot that we had, uh, and, and someone did it and exceeded us, champion them, and make sure let's not, you know, have another blind spot. And so um, things like that. It's just it, it, in the day and age of the internet, um, anyone with the phone could be a content creator. You just got to put the time and effort in. Uh, and, and trust me, like I remember our first, I think our first YouTube video, like just hit, like three years into the hundred views, like. I remember like when we got 10 views, I was like, this, this is sick. Like, 10 people watch this. And, and now like our videos get numerous amounts of views, but I like our very first video just finally cracked 100. I'm just like, wow, that's insane. Um, but at, at the very end of the day, it's just about content creation and, and just finding your kind of niche and just roll with it. Yeah, I think that that's really well said. And so 
I, I constantly find myself like fascinated at the differences and it kind of works out, you know, with the, the schedule of football and baseball that, you know, like this time of year, I have a lot more time and effort to be able to invest in, into the Astros in, in this case. Um, but, you know, you mentioned the golden era and I, I have to say, like, people refer to a lot of things as like golden ages, like golden era. I've never heard that term before up until it started to become associated with the Astros, which is really cool. Um, and so obviously I enjoy that as an Astros fan. It's the total and complete opposite of life as a Cowboys fan. You mentioned the the hybrid that you and I are, um, it's, you know, and I'm like, miss me with this. Like you have to be I'm from South Texas. I'm from the Rio Grande Valley. Like I can root for whoever the hell I want to. I root for the Cowboys. I root for the Astros. I root for the Spurs. I am a citizen of the state that you talked about. So, like, I'm all about, like, the diversity that, that I'm afforded, you know, growing up where I grew up and, and whatever. Like, you could grow up in Dallas or Houston and root for whoever you want to. Um, but so it's so strange to be like, man, my baseball team is so forward thinking and, <laughs> and so, like, you know, into, <clears throat> you know, analytics, right? And all this stuff. And the Cowboys are kind of catching up. But the Cowboys, like, to, to be in this, like, complete and total drought. And, and, and I do... You know, the, the tide has turned a little bit. Um, brighter days are ahead. If you don't win at all, people obviously tend to kind of think that you're a big loser. But um, what, what is that balance like for you? I mean, I, it's it's difficult for me. It's a weird juxtaposition. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I grew up, uh, my dad was a Cowboy fan. He was born and raised in Houston. And I think of the contrarian nature of my life I got from him. Like all his buddies were Oiler fans. And he was like, well, I'm going to be a Cowboy fan. And so he grew up with, you know, Roger and Randy and then got to experience like what I'm kind of experienced now with the Astros. He got the experience with the Cowboys right. in the 90s. And so I grew up and I was a Cowboy fan. I, technically, I had bowls as a, as a kid, but I don't I was a, I was an infant. Like, I don't remember any of those. And all, all I know is heartbreak. Uh, so w when I grew up, I was a Cowboy fan because of my dad. But then the Texans weren't around. The Oilers already were gone. Uh, and so when the Texans finally came about, I was already like 12, 13 years old and everyone around me was going to be a Texan fan. I was like, no, I'm still going to be a Cowboy fan. Like, this is how I was raised. And, and probably the contrarian nature in me to, to zig when everyone's zagging. But um, that's different. It's different as, a as you know, being Houston-centric on a lot of our sports. I get a lot of chirps. Uh, I embrace it just because it's it's heartbreak. I already know what's going to happen. Like, that, if, if the Cowboys win a Super Bowl, like, it will be probably one of the greatest days of my life because I would – the entire time I would just be like, somehow, some way, it's not going to happen because my heart has been ripped out. And uh, obviously, I, I think they're going to win a Super Bowl, hopefully soon. Uh, but the Houston fans tend to chirp, and, and I chirp back too, and it's fun, and, and it's all out of love. There's some there's some new people that have been following us that don't really know that, so they, like, tag me in Texas posts, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, just tag our Texan guys. Like, it's, this, is, <laughs> this isn't for me, but uh, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been fun to just, you know, send some jabs back and forth with the, with the crew. Yeah, and I mean – there really isn't this like strong Cowboys Texans rivalry. I would say, um, you know, I would say maybe like the the Schaub, you know, era when when they won those. I know Schaub wasn't you know part of it when they when they won those two playoff games like early two thousand tens. There was a little bit of like Texans fans being a little bit loud. Uh, I went to Texas A and M, which is like you know right down the road from Houston. So I had a lot of friends who were from Houston. So that was just like kind of a natural, um, you know, rivalry or whatever that you want to call it. But um, it is strange. And, you know, we experience the Cowboys fans that, you know, uh, participate in the things that we do that are from everywhere. So it's like, you know, you think that Houston is this like, how could a Cowboys fan come from Houston? So how could there be Cowboys fans in like Germany or like yeah. South Korea or, or whatever? Like there's Cowboys fans all over the place and Astros fans, too, uh, for that matter, which is just kind of like, you know, a demonstration of the power of the Internet. Like it is so cool. Um, to live in a world now where like I'm sure like all the Apollo fan base like comes from all over the place like it's super cool that like it can belong like there is something I think to like H-Town Pride and the Crawford boxes and you know the like geographical flag you complained or whatever um, but there is something to it kind of belonging to the whole world in that way um, who is your favorite cowboy right now oh uh, right now on the team I'm a Dak guy uh, I mean okay. I, I was I, I was I was a <laughs> I, I honestly, for a long time, like Tony Romo was my dude forever. Like he's, he will always be my dude forever. Having an Hispanic quarterback of the Cowboys was like the coolest thing ever. And uh, I lived and died for nine, but I also live and die for four. So I'm just a sucker for QB one at the end of the day. Yes, I'm 33 years old. And so Romo became the quarterback like when I was like in high school, like really impressionable age. And so like, yeah, like on some level, like nothing, nothing will ever like match that energy nothing, and, and that heartbreak. Nothing. Like. Yeah, um, I mean, and I love Dak. I mean, so I'm, I'm totally with you. And that that is like kind of like, I wouldn't say like a, a prerequisite. Um, you know, like like you kind of have to ride through the lows, right? Like to be able to like 
and, and I don't want to like I hate like gatekeeping like that. Like, oh well, you didn't support Dak whenever. So like now that he's like won the Super Bowl, like whatever, you're not allowed to cheer or to celebrate or whatever. That kind of stuff is dumb to me. But there is like a I'm not called a joy. Uh, but but there is like that that's part of the fandom of it all, right? Like, I mean that that's that's just kind of the way it goes. And so like I but I wanted to ask you, who's that guy for the Astros? Like the dude who like people hung with and then it worked out in the end. Oh man. Um I have a few more of these. I don't know if that's obvious. Like I wanted to, you know, that's kind of the yeah. whole thing here is like Cowboys Astros, like dots to connect opening day. That's how we work. I think, I think it's, it's not who you stuck around with. It's who you built up with on the Astro side. And that, that's Jose Altuve, right? Right. The story of just, uh, he was sent away. Obviously he's like five, four, 150 pounds soaking wet comes out in Venezuela to another trip to the camp. He gets signed for, you know, pennies on the dollar grinds all the way to the show. And he's on the teams. People don't realize, like, he was on the teams that were losing 115 games. Like, he was on that rebuild teams. And he emerged as this, this star, uh, obviously the World Series. Uh, and then, obviously, you want to get the church of, of the trash can. But he never used it. And one of our guys on staff is Tony Adams. And he was the one that he went back and logged every single game. And I think up to it was under, like, 1.5% of the trash cans being logged. And every single time, he's, like, looking at the dugout, knowing that he didn't want to participate. Right. They, were, they were just relaying it in. So, like – and then the, all the hate and the angst and the, the buzzer theories and all this different stuff. And to see him come out of that and wear all that and be booed at every stadium he goes to, and he'll be booed for the rest of his career and the gatekeeping of the baseball writers. And when he's going to be a hall of famer one day, like I will, I will live and die for Jose Altuve and I will go to war with him anytime because he should, he should be a, a movie. His life story should be a Disney movie. And it's, and now he's a villain. And you know what? I think he's uh He's not embraced it like Carlos Correa, but he sure sure as hell thrives off it on, on the road with his like 400 average, I think, last year on the road. So uh, the boost fuel him, I guess. It was tough uh, in the playoffs like that. Like I do feel like um, even amongst Astro fans, um, I have some family that lives in the Mont Bellevue area. And so whenever I go to an Astros game, it's usually with them. And I won't name their names, but like among my family members, there are some people like even like hardcore Astros fans, like miss me with the cheating stuff, the buzzers, all the stuff. But like, so like, even when you weed out those people, right? Like you're just talking about Astro fans. There are still some people who aren't like big time Altuve people like up oh, swings of the first pitch, like whatever. There are people yeah. who like who wear out, you know, in terms of patience with him. And so like, it was kind of awesome to see him have the moment, obviously in game six and, and just kind of have like a final celebration after the super like dry spell to start the playoffs. But that's, that's the guy, like that's the guy you're supposed to kind of hang with. And so that's who Dak kind of is. I think um, to your point about like the longstanding nature of Altuve's career, like the dude was around like before the color scheme changed, like, you know, like yeah. this is like, you, like you, it, it looks like a different sport. Like when you go back and look at like the early days that he's involved with the team and um, that's not quite there um i obviously i think that would have been like for the longest time jason witten was one of the only oh, players yeah. who had um who had played at texas stadium before they'd moved obviously and to me like that guy's like michael brantley it's like how's this dude mm. still hanging around like I'm, again yeah. not apples to apples but it's like he's just hanging around he's just like the the uncle with the kids. yeah Constant exactly bro. he's in a he's gonna show up be a grinder and get you get you whatever you need if it's if it's blocking all day or you know if it's stellar defense uh, like brantley he's in it they're gonna get it done yeah, and then I was trying to come up with a comp for Pena because that's that's such a hard thing. Like you show up Pollard. and like, Tony I mean, Pollard. you think Tony? I, I'm I'm gonna dis I'm gonna hard disagree with this. I, really? I mean, well, Pollard took a little while. Like you know, like you can't pick like who he is right now, right away. And plus, he's coming off the injury too. Like you have to be like I was thinking, CD. Like this dude like had a little bit of hype. Uh, CD had a lot of hype at the very beginning um you know came in and kind of replaced a superstar cd had to re like to literally took over the des mantle um obviously and and pena taking over for correa again not apples to apples but you know kind of i mean i think we i listened to y'all's latest behind the diamond it's like pena wasn't this like superstar all of last year obviously it turned it up when it mattered the most but but it took cd a little while to kind of get off the ground to become one of the like true bona fide alpha receivers in the nfl that's fair that's fair i think uh I think the replacement of, you know, uh, Dez to CD and, and Correa to, to Pena. Um, I also just think with, with JP, like, he was a third-round pick out of Maine. Maine and Memphis. Like, I, I kind of knew about Pollard because I was uh, – I'm a degenerate and I would do, like, DraftKings college football and, like, you would just always rack up fantasy points. 
And like watching Pinion, and and I'm more on you know watching the minor league games. I'm like, dude, this guy kind of, guy kind of, he's kind of it. And like he, he's kind of bow legged. He hasn't. He really really didn't fill out yet. He had a small frame, and then he came in one off season and just looked like Superman. The dude's just super yoked. Um, and that's kind of how I see it. But I also see the other side too with CD and and Des and like Correa JP three. Yeah, again, you can't find, like, I think the best one is Dak to Altuve, like, especially with the, like, the hate that they get for different reasons, obviously. Um, but I was trying to also come up with, because I was thinking about this, obviously, knowing you're going to be here, and I was trying to, like, equate who who I would say Micah is, because Micah is the, like, the guy, right? Like, the the yeah. top top of the line. And I thought about Jordan, but he's a little too quiet. Like, My- Micah has no problem being loud, being obnoxious. There's a lot of flair there. Um, he's the most Brady. loud. Yeah, he's the most like loud person on the team. You're saying, oh, I kind of like. I that think it's Braggy. I think it's Braggy, because Braggy will let Braggy will let you know. Uh, and and I don't. I know. I know Bregg's quite well. Um, been fortunate to spend some time with him. The dude's an almanac of just baseball, and he's always right. on, always on. We were at this at this gala event uh, for Tucker and Lance's foundation, and, and Bregg's came over, and he was. We were just sitting over, like doing a little, this little hand motion and step. I'm like, and I just I was like, dude, you ever off? He goes, gotta be, gotta bury me in the dirt. I was just like, and so like he has that. I think it's, it's kind of came down a little bit post, post scandal and, and, and right. outbreak, but he's got that, he's got that dog in him. I, I do think I like that the most. Um, again, maybe not like Mike is the best player on the team. Oh, Love right. Braggy, but you know what I mean? Like, like in that sense, it's not apples to apples, but like, you know, Breggy's got his hand in all sorts of like entrepreneurial things, right? Like that's totally Micah. Like when you start to involve like who they are as people as well. Um, and something like Micah embodies like what it is to be a cowboy, like especially like the glitz and the glamour. That's not necessarily the same with the Astros, but like Breggy does kind of like rep H town with like, not the way like I would say like Lance McCullers does um, just a little bit differently. Um, I know y'all would know that better than anybody, uh, but you know, like that, that, quality is the same i think that's a really good answer on that subject though who is lance because i have an answer that kind of pains me but i I'm, I'm curious who you think it is who's lance is it is it offense or defense for you i would say it's offense and it's a painful reason like i mean they're not painful it's just uncomfortable maybe awkward is maybe the best word oh man is it so as someone that's get gets banged up a little bit but still shines when he's in uh, i feel like right right there like our audience at least is like they know who i'm thinking of is it Tyron? It's Tyron Smith. That's the guy. Yeah. Like like a perennial world class player. When he's there, you just can't bank on it. You just you can't. I mean, as much as you, and and you convince yourself every year it's going to be different. It's going to be different. This is the one. It's it's gonna. He got hurt again, but it's it's a different thing. It's okay. He's going to come back. We're going to weather the storm. It's going to be totally fine until we get there. Yeah, yeah. And they're both nasty too when they're there. <laughs> when they're there and playing, they're so nasty. Yeah, I yeah. mean that one's painful. Um, so I didn't really enjoy it. Um, but still, um, I'm a fan, um, of the, I mean, I'm a fan of all of my comps for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, Tyron is just that guy. And so I was also then again, I was putting a lot of thought into this, like thinking who Tyler Smith is like the young replacement for him. And, and like Hunter Brown gets the like JV 2.0 thing, but I think Tyler Smith is like Fromber, like coming in like mm. new ace, like along the lines. Mm. Sort of thing. I would say hobby. I would just say hobby, but I can, that's a good one too. too. Totally fine. Yeah. With I that. think e- either, either those, uh, just the the guy that's gonna step up and just like wow he's gonna he's gonna produce like it may not it may not be like a a, a sexy stat line or anything like that but when you look at the end of the day you look at the film it's just like wow they're good <laughs> um my last one and there's no real option but mike mccarthy in many ways Ooh. is dusty baker um because like and now i mean well McCarthy has a Super Bowl. Like he gets right. probably the least amount of credit that any like you know I would say Super Bowl winner in the last twenty years has gotten for their title. And like I don't know that anybody's like Dusty's just like beloved figure in baseball, so everybody's like super happy for him, uh, whatever. But like like Astros Twitter like hates Dusty, right? Like I, like what's the over under on games until people like complain about the lineup? Like three and a half. <laughs> like, maybe saturday that's what i'm maybe saying like, saturday, like yeah. they don't even get out of the white Sox series without like somebody being like what the hell are you doing uh why yeah. is like mccormick leading off like whatever like blah 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 uh so like but that's that's mccarthy like mccarthy can say whatever he wants there's always a problem there's always something you get no credit for what you've done in the past it's just how can we bag on you today yeah so really early on i was uh not a dusty hater at all because he's just done so much for the game so much for the sport and his career 
uh, I was just very objective on his decisions and I actually hung out with him, went to dinner uh, during the pan, uh, uh, during the lockout. So right when, like I guess it was last, last winter, uh, we were in West Palm beach and I kid you not, we walked into this restaurant and it was like, he was the mayor of the town. Like he knew everyone. He's talking to everyone. He's, he's shaking hands. We sit down. I'm like, have you like, you eat here a lot? He's like, no, it's the first time I've been here. It's like the first time I've been here. He just like controlled the room. And I was just like, oh, I get it. I get why he was the hire. I get why. Cause this wasn't even like MLB media. This wasn't, right. this, this was just a normal restaurant in West Palm, West Palm beach. And I was just like, oh, okay. The light bulb went on. I was like, I would have been objective of this guy. And I was completely wrong because the way he just commands the room and, and it's like almost like he, he reminds me of like an old old school like um like a Spanish bullfighter. He's like, hey, look over here. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna get what you want. And that's exactly what the Astros needed at the time. And now I'm glad he finally got his ring. And like Mike too. I've been I've been objective of, of Mike for a minute or two. Um, but you know, he's won a Super Bowl. I haven't. I mean, and they both like I think embrace new age thinking in their respective games but i think they both also are like there's there's a feel right like there, yeah. there is like a feel element to what we do and like i've obviously done that at the highest level um and i'm inclined to trust that like as somebody who can't measure that it's it's frustrating it's difficult to trust right like well why like why why does this have to happen like why don't you want to play train mancini dusty turns out you were right you know what i mean like turn, yeah. turns out you know like we we were all stupid for like screaming about this on the internet um so in that sense i mean they, they mccarthy also can be rather charming i don't think he gets enough credit for that like that the dude can talk about like being mayor of the town like run a room whatever like dude's got a little bit of of game to him like that he can spit um in the same way that like dusty i think is more of like a weaving a yarn like telling a story mike will just like make you laugh make you feel like the most important person in the room which is a different quality um, i said that was the last one but this is actually the last one jose abreu is the new like mercenary come on in join the party Ooh. like past level of experience i know the answer to this but i'm curious if you can do it it's gilly that okay just making sure yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah it's, you, it's you, got a, you got a defensive player of the year basically yeah. you know a defensive mvp you know what i mean like you're coming in you're joining the party you're going to help everybody around you you don't have to carry the group the way you, you've had to do with your past teams you come in there's a lot of help around you now you can thrive and flourish 100 percent, 100 percent. wow and you think that was going dialed, on thursday i think he i think he's going yard his first, not his first time he's going yard against his i mean It'd be but so you said poetic. it would happen on Thursday. I listen. I, mean, I know right? it is. I know it's going to happen Thursday. I'm a little nervous now, but like, it's going. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, I think it'll happen in the series for sure. But, for sure um, in the series. I just want to. I had to call my shot. You know, it'd be awesome I mean, the, if, it, the, if it was like first half. It'd be oh. a little less awesome now that you've kind of walked it back a little bit. Like, oh, I don't know. You know <laughs> <laughs> but we call it a hedge. We call it a hedge. Yeah. We call it a hedge. Um, uh, okay, so I want to look at over unders. Um, to yeah. see, so I think Cowboys over under, according to our friends at DraftKings, is nine and a half uh, for this season. Um, Astros is, depending on where you look, ninety. Let's call it ninety-five and a half. Who are you more confident in hitting the over on their respective season? Presuming, presuming health, presuming everything going rather chalk around them, uh, their respective divisions, et cetera, et cetera. Oh man, I said ninety-four wins on our podcast, so I guess I'm going to go Cowboys over nine and a half. Uh, just because the Astros, I, I still think they win the division, uh, and they're probably going to win 104 games now that I said that, because I think last year I said 93 and they won like 106, but, uh, the margins, I think get a little bit tighter with the angels being healthy to start the year. And then the Rangers obviously getting better with DeGrom. Um, and then the new schedule, like you're not going to beat up on the Oakland A's 20 times out of the year. Now you're playing everyone. So I think the margins dry up a little bit, uh, where the Cowboys, I think, <clears throat> It's just like the Eagles, right? Like it's 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 right there in front of you. Know what you know who you have to beat. Uh, I know the Giants and blah blah blah. You know who cares? Uh, I, I, the Eagles are 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 the problem in that division. Um, and so I, I think the Cowboys can get uh, back in into the in the at least the teams, hopefully. So I thought a lot about this too. If we live in the world, like a lot of people are going to be pissed because a lot of our listeners are Rangers fans, obviously. So, you know, whatever. But if we live in a world. And they have to the Grom. They have to the Grom. Right, right. right. The Grom. I'll give you that. You have to Grom. So, like, if if the Cowboys are the Astros here, to me, I think the Angels, like, if we look at the, their respective divisions, the Angels are like the commanders to me. Um, you've got Terry McLaurin. You've got Jahan Dotson. You've got Chase Young. Like, you have these pieces that it should work out. Like, you may, they may not be as, like, world class as what, you know, the Angels have going on. But, like, you have these dudes that should be able to carry your team to some degree. It just 
there's always something wrong. There's the the team is is a you know a malfunction. It can never ever happen for you. We can kind of set our watches by that. So that's how I, I kind of see those things shaking out. Um, the Giants to me are kind of like the Mariners. Like okay, cute. You know what I mean? Like you've earned some of our respect. Um, props. Like we'll take you a little bit more seriously than we have in the past. But like until you get it done against us, you know we'll see you next year. You know what I'm saying? Type thing. Um, although if I'm being honest, I have a good friend who's a Mariners fan. The, you know, the series was a little bit more touch and going that I would have liked. Um, yeah. especially like that was probably the toughest series when I look back oh, on it, like, like hundred percent, like uh, underrated toughest series that the Astros played last year, e- even kind of the world series. Like that was, yeah. I was never like nervous in the world series. I was a, little, I was a little worried against, um, against Seattle. But, um, for me, that makes Philly, Texas. Um, okay. cause unafraid wow, to like, that's gonna hurt a lot of people listening but, <laughs> but that's like gonna uh, hurt a lot <laughs> unaf- like the thing like cowboys fans hate about the eagles front office is like they're unafraid to make the big move right like going out and getting to grom is like the example of that right like the cowboys kind of are the astros like trying to build from within trying to like you know restore the farm system trying to to make these smart methodical decisions like a bray you like gilly etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think the comp does work yeah i think uh, look and and the astros and, and rangers haven't really like played each other on a scale of like where it meant something uh, i think maybe 2016 uh yeah Romper i think broke 2016 the was a, yeah. starts uh record against them what are you talking about no i mean time. like the rangers were really good when the astros suck and then the right, astros right. Have been okay. so good and the rangers have so like there's never been like a, a precipice of like two teams meeting each other and, and right. we'll have it really early on this year because i still think when you spend a half a billion dollars on like four players it's still not sustainable uh but you still have half a billion dollars going to four players that are really, really good. Um, and so really early on, I think there'd be some battles. And like, I think anyone in this division, if you're a Rangers fan, you're a Nationals fan, or you're a fan of whatever team, the AL West, you get to tell your kids one day that you have to see Shohei Otani and Mike Trout play. You get to say, you can see the best pitcher probably ever in, in Jacob DeGrom. You could say that you got to see the golden era of the Astros. And then with the Mariners, you're able to say, like, hey, Julio Rodriguez and these guys out in the Pacific Northwest are just winning 90, 90 wins. Like, it's it's grippy back in the day. So uh, if you're just a fan of baseball and a fan of the division, and obviously there's there's hate on both sides, and that's what makes sports so great. When you take the 30,000-foot view, you'll be able to tell your kids, your grandkids, whoever, that you get to see these guys play. I mean, that's that's awesome. Like, I'm not – this year, I think I'm going to go to every Angel game because that probably be the last time I see Otani – and try out play together against the Astros. And that's just me being a fan of, of baseball. That's a good idea. Uh, my family and I were going to San Diego in the summer, and we were thinking about making the drive to Anaheim, and, or, you know, whatever, to go see the Angels, sorry. And they're playing in San Diego that weekend. Mm. So just like, it worked out wonderfully. I mean, it was just, yeah. you know, an incredible coincidence. Um, so I agree with you um, in that sense. Uh, with regards to the Rangers, because we do have a lot of fans, do you think we should throw them a tiny little bone? 82 yeah, and a half is their over under, according over. to DraftKings. You think so? I'm over. Yeah, I think they're probably going to be wild card? Know, 85, 85, 80. No, I think they're going to be outside looking in. Uh, I because uh, I have I have Astros winning the division, then the Mariners in a wild card. Um, probably Twins, White Sox for the other one, and then someone coming out of the East. I think they're going to miss out. I just think they're top heavy. They have to stay healthy. Look, they have they have John, who's going to be really good. Uh, obviously, Degrom. They have all the pitchers, Simeon and, and Seegs. I think Seager. I think Seager could be a dark horse for MVP if he stays healthy. I think he's very much in the mold of Kyle Tucker, where the shift ban is going to help him out tremendously. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why I kind of have him on the over. Now, if they get hit with the injury bug, like it seems it does every every year, then we're going to look really bad and we'll have a dead ticket in August. But right now, right before opening day, I'll, I'll take the over. I'll throw him a bone. That's well said. Okay. Um... Let's get out of here. Um, taking the Astros to win the World Series. Would you like, like how much? One to ten, because I think like your confidence in the Astros winning the World Series has got to be like a nine, right? So, what would it be for the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl? Cool. How I about like, this? How, like instead of like just appearing in the NFC Championship game, that's the like holy grail at this point, right? Like, like do do the thing that you haven't done in forever. So, like, I'll I'll lower the bar a little bit. I'd say my confidence is like an eight. Wow, really? I mean, dude, the division, like, I don't know, you know, if you like this, we, we say this all the time, like the NFC hasn't had a repeat champion since 2004. So like, who's, who's going to win it if the Eagles aren't like the Giants, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you just like crapped on them. Yeah. Um, so like, th- they're going to be a playoff team. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is about to lead the division um, or the conference, excuse me. Yeah, I recognize he's going to probably play for the Jets and the Cowboys have to play him. But like, OK, cool. That's one game. And it's a very inconsequential game as against an right. AFC team. Like 
T- today, Dak is at worst the second best quarterback in the conference. You have maybe the best cornerback duo in the conference. Your wide receiver group is so much better. Like the the people that are in charge of scoring points and stopping the points are a lot better. Uh, the draft hasn't even happened, and they generally take care of that. Like, I mean, like they they just did. They just went to the playoffs two years in a row for the first time in forever. Like they're they're you know they're getting rid of the curses. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're starting to kind of like take care of the ghouls and the ghosts in the past. So like, I mean, who, who's going to stand in their way? Like name two teams that are going to be in the NFC title game in front of them. that aren't the Eagles. Well, until San Fran, I mean, they could trot out. I think That's Shannon true. can go out there and, uh, just till we get over that bugaboo. Uh, Eagles in the playoffs would always be tough. Hopefully we're at home against them. Uh, I, I get what you're saying. Don't get me wrong, but I just feel I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I feel like Charlie Brown kicking that damn ball. And it's just over and over. And, and you know what? Maybe this is why the Super Bowl, when they, when they do inevitably win it, because I, I think they will. And I think, I think they're in the room. I don't think they found the light switch yet. Um, mm. But when it happens, it's going to be so sweet. Like, it, it honestly is. Um, obviously, obviously we've, we've won two World Series, right, in the last, you know, five, six years. And we've been to two more and lost those. But, like, when the Cowboys win one, it's going to be sweet. Because, honestly, like, I'll get to celebrate that with my dad. And, like, Obviously, that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome because like I he grew like we grew up as Cowboys. I remember going to Texas Stadium. I remember going to I was at the the Eagles Cowboys game, the Monday night game when when uh, McNabb and To no McNabb and To just went off on the Cowboys. Oh, you're saying oh yeah, back at, back you, in the day like an oh well, that was oh four four oh four. Um, I think it was 04. Um, the one I, the, the one people bring up is the Deshaun drops the ball in front of the goal line. Oh, no, yeah. Um, no, no, the, that was the other one was like, just, I was, yeah. the whole Texas stadium was singing Fly Eagles Fly, and I was sitting there just crying in my dad's arm. Like, I was like, this is the worst I ever. So, like, I've had those worst moments, and like, I know that the Cowboys are capable of getting there. So, uh, I'm at a five and a half. I'm glad you're Dude. higher than me. But look, I, I have to protect myself, I have to protect my heart. I, I don't to. think so. Like, if you're a Cowboys and Astros fan, which is the boat that you and I fall into, like this, this, like this is the best it's ever been. I would say, like oh, in the, so. but like in the run of like the golden era of the Astros, right? So like golden era obviously begins 2017, which excludes the rookie Dak Seek here. So you don't like you can't lump that into this. So 2017 was an awful season for the Cowboys. Plus the Eagles won the Super Bowl. So like if you're a Cowboys Eagles fan, like it was kind of bittersweet, um, which is why like tw- the 22 title is a little bit sweeter for me. Like that I didn't have to yeah. you know deal with the like other end of that. Um, but every other season, like 2018, cool Cowboys trade for Amari, losing the playoffs. 2019, super terrible. 2020, awful for a million reasons. 21, cool. 22, fine. But like now it's like the Cowboys are like treading water and swimming forward. They're not. They're no longer just like cannonballing in and then like getting out of the water like they're staying in the i pool. like that yeah. i like yeah. that yeah. okay six i'm gonna six it's <laughs> <laughs> en- your, enough to bump me up half a point yeah um on twitter at apollo Des one how dare somebody take apollo Des and force you to go with the one uh actually i had i had apollo Des, and then we launched the company and i got copyright strike for some kendrick lamar video like the wow. day one of launch of company uh, in February 20, 20th, 2020. Yeah. And so I was like, well, that sucks. So I got to go to Apollo Des once. So, wow. Uh, so, well, I respect so that you fault. did that, though. It was my own fault. Yeah. yeah. I respect that you did that instead of like going like Apollo underscore Des. Like that wouldn't have been as cool. Like I hate the underscore right. move. Um, yeah. So, you know, but, like is one your number? Is that the, is, or is that just convenient for the, the hand? That was just convenient. Yeah. 27 was my college baseball number. I was like, I don't want to have 27. Now we're like looking like an aim, like username, and you know, and it was miss. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go with the, the goal. And not that there's anything wrong with this, but you would have looked like really Altuve fanboy if you'd gone 27. Yeah, you know? that is true. That is <laughs> so true. Like, that is, again, yeah. super fine to be an Altuve fanboy, but like, um, at least you don't have to deal with those consequences is all I'm saying. True. Uh, wow. Uh, still, everybody check out Apollo Houston, Apollo Media. You guys have the greatest shirt designs. The, the Astros fandom short game is a tough one. Um, I'll say, like, there's a lot of great stuff going on. Um, but y'all stand above the rest. I um, I bought the, speaking of Breggy, the um, the Daddy Yanks only one. Uh, Thank when, you. When we had my yeah. son. So, um, yeah. Des, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, last thing. Um, what are you currently watching on Netflix? Ooh. I am currently watching. Can I pull it up real quick? Can I? Yeah. Because I was traveling. Well, don't dox um, yourself. Like, I, I thought you were going to like show yeah, the no, screen no, on, no, no, on no, the no, screen. No. I'm not going to dox myself. 
I've been watching a lot of The Last of Us on on HBO, but Netflix wise, I mean, uh, it's it's more of a like you know. I had a Starbucks. Like, even if you had a coffee that was from somewhere else, like, it's a Starbucks type of thing. So, yeah. if The Last of Us is your answer. That's okay. But if you have a Netflix answer, uh, that would be uh, great. The last thing I watched was The Full Swing. Did you enjoy it? I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was yeah. great drama. If there was any any year to do a golf documentary in sure. the way the F1, it was it was last year's. Have you seen the F1 show? Yeah. I'm, oh, that's how I got into F1. Uh, I'm I'm early that. on. I'm almost yeah. done with the first season. So, like, we uh, next time we do this, uh, we'll talk about something else that Cowboys fans don't care about. Like, today it was the Astros. Next time it'll okay. be F1. Um, okay, sweet. Dez, uh, you're the man. Um, good luck with The Last of Us. And um, I hope um, I hope Abreu goes yard. First at bat. For maybe one of us. One of us. Maybe the first four at bats. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for having me on.